so I did a Sentry CLI send event, um, which is basically similar to capture message um, in, uh, in any Sentry SDK. And in addition, what I have here is I have a very simple project um, for Python. So we're going to use Python for, for most of the rest, um, where I just set up some buggy applications so we have something to play with. So the events that are sent in, uh, they will appear here in this project that they're working with. And here we can see there's a very simple Hello World event that we uh, we have received now. And I'm also going to send um, sort of a basic um, error in from the Python SDK. Um, and then we can see it different types of errors. So the most important thing about grouping is that Sentry really takes into account um, various different types of the event um, and depending on the type of the event. So this here is what's called the message event. And a message event is always grouped by a variation of this message here. So if you look down here into the details, you can see that the grouping algorithm really took this entire message in. And this is what it grouped by. When we go in and for instance, look at the Python event that we have here, then in comparison, you can see that uh, here the event grouping information tells me it was grouped by the exception stack trace. And that's generally what Sentry will optimize for is it always will pick a stack trace that has one. Um, and then here, if we, if we unfold this, you can see each individual line that fed into this. All right, so since this is a Python event, we can see that it, um, it took all of those purple values and fed this into the grouping algorithm. And out of this, it produced this grouping hash. So every event that shares this hash will go into the same group. Um, there's also additional stuff that it didn't include. So if you go on all values, you can see that file names, for instance, didn't play a role here. And also the value of the, of, of the error was, was ignored. So you can always go to here to figure out like why events go together and don't go together. So this is the um, exception that we created here. So this is a very basic um, example program. It tries to load some JSON. And when it fails doing that, uh, it will capture an exception, right? And so it sends some extra stuff around. So the first thing that uh, we're going to do is we're, we're going to, so in this case, you can see the error that was produced was the file doesn't exist. I'm also going to tell it to load an invalid JSON file. Um, and what we will get out of this here is that effectively we, we get two errors eventually when, uh, when it's finished processing. We will have one group that's sort of the file not found error um, because we, we didn't manage to load a JSON file. And we have a second one, which is JSON decode error, right? So there might be, the, these for Sentry are considered to be two separate groups, but you might want to just say like, oh, it's the same. So one way in which you can accomplish this is you can basically take these two and say like, please merge. Um, that's sort of one way. Um, that will give you basically a group combining both of them. And so if these errors continue happening, they will go into one group. Another way in which you can do this is you can basically set up um, uh, custom rules both on the server and in the SDK to customize the behavior. 